a very good evening uh, to you all uh, dear brothers and sisters in christ so we thank our heavenly father and our lord and savior jesus christ uh, for giving this wonderful opportunity to discuss uh, his wonderful words of life uh, so today as we all uh, have already told you uh, we are going to study about a time prophecy that is given to us in the scriptures so first uh, time prophecy what we are going to study is uh, about uh, christ uh, first advent uh, where it is given to us in the book of uh, daniel chapter 9 so we all know book of uh, daniel is a very important book uh, where a lot of time prophecies are written and today we're going to read one time prophecy uh, about uh, christ first advent uh, in uh, daniel 9 chapter so can uh, joel brother read daniel 8 chapter uh, verses 9 11 okay brother <clears throat> ye he magnified himself even to the prince of the host and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away and the place of his sanctuary was cast down and and an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason reason of transgression and it cast down to to the ground it practices and prosper then i heard one saint speaking and another another saint unto that certain saint which spake how long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolations to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden under foot and said unto me unto two husband how how sorry thousand. unto two thousand and their hundred three hundred days then sell the century b cleans okay now before studying daniel 9 chapter we need to look into the background of why daniel 9 chapter uh, is coming to the picture so the beginning of it is in uh, daniel 8 chapter so daniel 8 chapter daniel was shown a vision of the ram and the he goat you see and uh, interpretation of it uh, was, also, was also shown that the sanctuary shall be trodden down and it shall be for uh, 2300 days so then after 2300 days uh, you see daniel was told that uh, then only the sanctuary shall be cleansed so sanctuary means what temple you see so temple will be defiled for 2300 days so then only the temple uh, shall be cleansed so if you convert this 2300 days it is actually nearly 6 and a quarter days this is 6 and a quarter year 6 years 3 months so what daniel actually thought was that uh, god is still continuing to punish the people of israel for an additional 6 more years you see so we all know that uh, god had actually prophesied through king uh, cyrus uh, that uh, they may go and build the temple at jerusalem you see we have studied uh, last week about babylon no you see many many the kelupar sin cyrus came inside and set all the jewish people at liberty and uh, cyrus told the jewish people to go and build the temple so after this one when daniel 8 uh, chapter vision was shown where it was told that uh, another 2300 days the sanctuary the temple shall be like that only daniel misunderstood you see this vision of daniel 8 chapter and thought after 70 years instead of israel getting the liberty the freedom to go and build the temple at jerusalem they need to again continue to be punished for six more years you see 
uh, how did Daniel misunderstand this one? This is given to us in Daniel 9 chapter verse 2 to 5. Uh, Munna sister, can you read Daniel's 9 chapter verses 2 to 5? In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the dissolution of Jerusalem. Ah, one minute, sister. See and here. He has studied from the book of Jeremiah that God would accomplish only 70 years in dissolution. So, Daniel 8 chapter mentions about additional 2300 days. So, what actually Daniel thought that after this 70 years of dissolution, additional 2300 days punishment is going to be for Israel. And as soon as Daniel read this prophecy, he saw the vision. Immediately, he sat uh, down in ashes, in sackcloth, in fasting and praying to God, asking for forgiveness. Now continue. Muna Sutra, please continue. Huh? And I set my face unto the Lord God. To sit by prayer and supplication with fasting and soft cloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandment, we have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have revealed even by departing from thy worship and from thy judgment. Ah, he confessed saying, we have sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. And as Daniel was praying, immediately God sent Gabriel. You see? Even Daniel was still praying. You know, God immediately sent Gabriel from heaven. Go, my beloved uh, prophet Daniel has misunderstood uh, the vision of Daniel 8 chapter. Please go and clearly explain him the vision. That is when Gabriel comes uh, and explains in detail uh, the Vision of 8th chapter and clears the misunderstanding of Daniel. Read 9th chapter verse 20 to 23. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read Daniel 9th chapter verses 20 to 23 brother? Okay brother. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and Presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Ah, uh, see, even as he was praying, even as he was confessing the sins of Israel, his people, you see, who came? Gabriel, oh, who had already shown the vision to Daniel in the 8th chapter. He came very swiftly, very fastly to Daniel. Then continue with that. What did he say to Daniel? And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to sow thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, under, understand the matter and consider the vision. Ah, understand the matter and consider the vision. Now clearly understand the matter. Now clearly you see, perceive the vision. Consider it. Don't misunderstand it. 
Then the Gabriel angel clearly explains, uh, you see, the matter of 2300 days vision. You see, now read Daniel 9.24. Uh, Amar brother, you are there brother? Daniel 9.24, can you read brother, Amar brother? Okay. Okay. Seventy weeks are determined upon the peoples and upon the holy city to finish the trans transgressions and to make a end of sin and to make a reconciliations for a iniquity and to a bring in a Ever, everlasting right, right, righteousness and to a seal of the vision and prophecy and to um, anoint the most holy. Ah, what did he say? You see, he clearly explains them saying 70 weeks are determined for you and for your people. That means here Gabriel clearly explains that the entire 2300 days vision is not applicable to Israel. In that 2300 days, you see, only, you see, 70 weeks are applied for Israel. So you think only about 70 weeks, sir. Don't get confused about uh, the balance, uh, 1810 days, which is nothing to God to do with Israel. So, dear brethren, here, you see, Gabriel clearly explains the matter that 70 weeks are fixed, you see, for Israel. You see, not uh, the entire 2300 days, which is actually 327 weeks. No, in 327 weeks, only 70 weeks are fixed for your people. So, now he clearly explains what actually should happen in the 70 weeks. You see? So, when the 70 weeks should begin, when the 70 weeks should end. So Daniel is clearly told, don't need to worry about all the entire things because none of those things has got related to, you see, the nation of Israel. Because Daniel was more concerned about the nation of Israel, God blessing them. They're going back to Jerusalem. They're going back and building the temple in Jerusalem. You see, they're worshipping the one true God. He was only worried about that one. But when the angel, you see, clearly explains the matter, he also tells uh, the very important six points uh, that has to happen in the 70 weeks. First thing, you see, just now we read, no, brother read, no. First thing, to finish the transgression. Next, uh, to make an end of sin. Next, uh, to make reconciliation for iniquity. Fourth point, to, bear, to bring in everlasting righteousness. Fifth one, to seal up the vision and the prophecy. And the sixth one, to anoint the most holy. So all these things should happen in 70 weeks. This has to happen in Israel, you see, in 70 weeks. Okay. So what should happen in the 70 weeks? You see, when is the beginning? When is the end? Okay. Let us read Daniel 9.25. Daniel 9.25 uh, Mausam brother, you are there, line. Can you read? Is it okay for you? Yes, brother. Yeah, I'm fine, brother. Uh, praise the Lord. Yeah, okay. uh, praise Can the Lord. I, I uh, he is brother Mausam. He's uh, attending the classes. He's almost covered all, all the classes like you are covered. Uh, he's a Nepali, he's living in Japan. So, currently, he's listening to the classes. So, here are the other brother and brother who, like you, are listening from Nepal. So, we will uh, discuss about these things later. Uh, anyway, thank you. Welcome. God bless. Uh, please read Daniel 9.25. Uh, okay. Thank you so much for all coming on the, uh, these classes. I'm so pleased. Okay. I'll begin, brother. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Daniel 9 was 25. It's written like this. Uh, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the 
Masia, the prince shall be seven weeks and three scores and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Very good, brother. So here it says 70 weeks. When it will start? You see, huh? it says huh? One minute. You see, it says uh, from restoring of uh, Jerusalem, you see, building uh, <coughs> building the temple till the anointing of Messiah, it is, uh, you see, uh, seven weeks and, uh, you see, 62 weeks. Uh, you see, so that's what uh, this verse says. Uh, you see, uh, see, I'll show it to you in this chart. It says, uh, No, therefore, I understand from going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem. You see, a degree was given from that date till when Messiah is there, it is going to be. Uh, how many weeks? Uh, 7 weeks plus 62 weeks. That means uh, 69 weeks will happen in Simsa. You see? And uh, you see, when uh, it says about uh, rebuilding of Jerusalem, you see, it says the wall shall be built in very tribulous times. Now, before understanding this prophecy, we need to understand what is this, uh, you see, Messiah. Now, who is this Messiah? You see? Now, who is this Masiya? Tell me. Who is Masiya? Um, Jesus Christ. Um, Very good, brother. Jesus Christ is our Masiya. Okay. Now, when did Jesus Christ become the Masiya? If you see, when God anointed him with the Holy Spirit, that is the time when Jesus became the Christ. You know, Jesus was born. He was named as Jesus. But when did Jesus become the Christ? You see, when he was anointed with the Holy Spirit. So, huh, anointing of the Holy Spirit that makes him the Messiah or the Christ. Let us read John 1.41. John 1.41. Uh, Romy sister, can you read John 1.41? Yes, sir. Okay, brother. Uh, he first findeth his own brother Simon and said unto him, we have found, um, I was actually reading from the screen, brother. Oh, you're reading from screen. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, sorry. Please. Oh. Sorry. Um, we have found the Messiah, Messiah hmm. which is being interpreted as the Christ. Very good. Stuff. Which is being interpreted as the Christ. So, you see... It says, uh, uh, from the building of Jerusalem to Jesus the Messiah means it is at the baptism of Jesus. From that time to the time, it is totally a period of 69 weeks. Uh, that is uh, clearly split in two ways. It says, seven weeks and three score and two weeks. Actually, a score in KGB Bible is 20 years. So, three score means 60 years. Two weeks means 62 weeks. So, 62 weeks and 7 weeks is actually a 69 week. So, 69 week, you see, who shall be present? It seems Messiah shall be present. It seems. Okay. Now, what shall Messiah do? You see, what are his activities? Let us read from verse 26 and 27. Can uh, uh, Joel Buddha read from uh, verse 26 and 27, Daniel 9 chapter? Okay, brother. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah, Messiah be caught up, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the world desolation are determined, and he shall come from the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he 
shall cause the sacrifice, the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading, overspreading abomination, he shall make it desolate even until until the consummation and that determined shall be pureed upon the desolate. Okay. So here you see the lot of things mentioned. So let us continue only a few things which is related to the prophecy. It says, He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. You see? So Jesus will be present on this earth for one week, it seems. And he shall confirm his covenant with many for one week. And in the middle of the week, you see, in the middle of the week, Jesus shall die. You see, he shall cause the sacrifice and obligation to cease. You see, and in the end, at the end of 70 weeks, you see, desolation or, you see, determined upon people of Israel, it seems. Now, okay. See, this is what the scripture said. This is what the prophecy says. You see, that means in the 70 weeks, what all things has to happen? To finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation of iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, to anoint the most holy. But in the last week, Messiah shall be present, it seems. And he shall be killed. He shall seize. He shall die. In the middle of the week, it seems, by his death, all the sacrifices shall be stopped, it seems. Okay, now, is it literally, uh, you see, one week? Was Jesus on this earth one week? No. We all know that Jesus lived on this earth for a 33 and a half years. Okay, now, then why it is mentioned as a week? You see, Daniel book is a prophecy. For a prophet, one day means one year. So, wherever the prophecy is given, wherever the, you see, calculations, days are given in the prophet, there we need to apply the code. You see, which code? The code saying that one day for a prophet is one year. Then only we can clearly understand his vision. You see, where is it given in the Bible? Let us read Ezekiel 4, 6. It's given to us in Ezekiel 4, chapter, verse 6. Ezekiel 4, chapter, verse 6. Uh, Gopal brother, can you read? And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of, of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Ah, I have appointed thee each day for a year. So for a prophet, one day means one year. So 70 weeks means what? First let us calculate and convert that weeks into days. See, in a week, there are seven days. So 70 weeks means how many days? 490 days. See, now let us apply this formula. One day for a prophet means one year. So, 490 days actually means 490 years. That is what God was telling to Daniel. You see, then, you see, 69 weeks means what? It is 483 days. You see, so 483 days means 483 years. So, here the prophecy was actually telling that, uh, you see, 70 weeks means 490 years are determined for people of Israel. The people of Israel has to worry only about 490 years, not about everything. So when will this 490 years start? You see, it says from the rebuilding of Jerusalem till Messiah, till the baptism of Jesus is 483 years. And after that one, you see, Jesus will... Confirm his covenant with many people for one week means what? One week means uh, seven days. Seven days means seven years. Uh, but in the middle of the week, uh, that is three and a half uh, days, for a prophet it means three and a half years, Jesus will die. So therefore, dear brethren, this is the prophecy 
which clearly tells that Jesus Christ did his ministry on this earth for three and a half years. There's no other scripture in the entire Bible, you see, which clearly tells uh, how many years did Jesus do his ministry. This is the only scripture, this is the only prophecy that is given. So Jesus, you see, baptized and three and a half years he did his ministry and fulfilled this prophecy. Okay, now let us calculate when this uh, prophecy began and when this ended so that we can come to a conclusion when actually Jesus was born. You see, you see, there is a degree that is given uh, to in, uh, in the book of Ezra, you see, to go and build the temple of Jerusalem. This was given by Cyrus. You can note it down, not uh, need, no need to read it. Ezra, first chapter, verses 1 to 3. Here, Cyrus gives a degree to go and build the temple of Jerusalem. You see, temple of Jerusalem, not the city of Jerusalem. Underline it. You see, there is a difference between building the temple and building the city. There, in book of Daniel, the prophecy was telling about the rebuilding of temple. Is it? No, it was prophesying about the rebuilding of uh, the walls of Jerusalem, not the temple of Jerusalem. Okay. Now you see, here we don't want to refer to this building of temple. You see, because uh, there's got nothing to do with uh, the prophecy of Daniel. But there is one more prophecy, one more degree, you see, that was given, you see, to Nehemiah. You see, we all know Nehemiah was a cupbearer and once he was very sad in the presence of king. So king asked him, what do you want? That is the time that Nehemiah requested the king saying, how can I be happy when my father's sepulchre, when my father's city are lying waste without walls and it is consumed with fire. So let us read this verse. Uh, Nehemiah second chapter. Uh, verse 3. Nehemiah 2nd chapter, verse 3. Uh, Muna Sitar, can you read Nehemiah 2nd chapter, verse 3? And said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's spellcurse, lie uh, lieth waste and the gates thereof are consumed with fire. Mm. How can I be happy? You see, when the place of my father's sepulchre and the gates are consumed with fire, then king asks, what do you want? What favor do you want? You tell me. I'll grant you. Then uh, Nehemiah request, if I have found favor with you, please give us a permission, you see, to go and build uh, the Jerusalem wall. You see, let us give, please give us the permission, you see, to build uh, the walls of huh? Jerusalem. Read Nehemiah 2nd chapter, verses 4 and 5, sister. Continue. Well, mm. Then the king said unto me, For what does thou make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. And I said unto the king, If it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's spelker, that I may build it. Very good. You see, now verse 8, sister. Huh? And later on to Asab, the keeper of the king's forest, uh, that he may give me timber to make a beam for the gates of the palace, which appertained to the house, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. Mm, you see? What did he request? A request for the materials for the wall of the city and for the house that I shall enter. 
So this was the degree that actually Daniel was mentioning. You see, similarly, Nehemiah was given favor. You see, Nehemiah was sent to Jerusalem. You see, to build the walls. You know how the walls were built? It was built in 52 days. It was so, you see, danger that the people who built the wall, they built the wall in one hand while they held their sword in other hand. This is how, you see, the walls were built in troublous times. That's what, you see, Daniel 9.25 tells. It tells the walls shall be built in troublous time. So that is the beginning of this prophecy. You see, dear brethren. So uh, let us read this verse. Uh, Nehemiah 4 chapter. Nehemiah 4 chapter. Uh, verse 16 to 18. Hmm. Nehemiah 4 chapter 16 to 18. Joel brother, can you read brother? Okay, brother. <clears throat> and it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears, the seals, and the bows, and the habergons, and the rulers were behind the behind all the house of Judah, they which built on the wall, and they that bar burdens with those that led it, every one with one of his hand wrote in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. Ah, see, one hand they built the ball, other hand they held the weapon. This is how. The walls of Jerusalem was built. You know, Nehemiah was granted 12 years paid leave. In the 12 years, he completely rebuilt Jerusalem. Now, okay. You see, now when this is the prophecy happened, what was his date? You see, in Nehemiah, second chapter, first verse, if you read, a period is given there. It says, it is during the 12th year of King Arthur Xus. You think? 12th year of the king of Arthur Xerxes. Now, which is this uh, period? If you see, if you see the history, it is 454 BC. So, from 454 BC, this prophecy says, uh, you see, uh, unto the Messiah, you see, from 454 BC, it is uh, 483 years till Messiah. That means, you see, Jesus' baptism. Okay. Now, if we calculate this year, you can clearly come to know when Jesus was baptized. You see, 483 years, Daniel 9, chapter 24th verse uh, prophecy. In that one, you minus 454 BC. You see, how much you'll get? You'll get 29 AD. You see, huh? anybody can cross check it later. You see, 483 years, you see, minus 454 BC because. Uh, Arthur Axis King, uh, second year is 454 BC. Huh? So 454, you need to subtract from 483 years, you will get 2980. Now, why do we need to subtract? I will tell you. See, this is the timeline. Anything after AD is uh, plus. But anything uh, before AD, that means BC, is minus. You see, BC means what? Before Christ. AD means what? Many people think it is after death of Christ. No. AD means, uh, you see, uh, unknow domino. If BC is before Christ, AD means after death of Christ. Where do you put the period from birth of Christ to death of Christ? You see? So, AD is not after death of Christ. You see, AD is a Latin word, unknow domino. That full form, the meaning of it, in the year of the Lord. So, when our Lord was present, that's what it means. You see, dear brethren, so all the period of AD is plus, 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 plus. Therefore, you see, it's 2024, next year is 2025. We are living in AD. But BC, if you go, it goes in a reverse order. Hence, dear brethren, you see, we need to subtract. You see, instead of adding, 
So 483 years minus 454 BC, you'll get 2980. Which, what is 2980? 2980 is the year in which our Lord was baptized. You see, so Jesus was baptized at 2980. You see, from the rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem till Messiah, you see, it says it is period of 483 years. So Jesus' first advent actually happened in 2980 when he was consecrated. You see, 30 years before, you see, Jesus was born. Okay. Now, what all things has to happen in this, uh, you see, period when Jesus was, uh, you see, living on this earth? He says to finish the transgression, to make the end of sin, to make reconciliation of iniquity, you see, to bring everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy to the most early. Now, did all these things happen? Yes, dear brother. All these things Jesus fulfilled. The first thing, he finished the transgression. How? He made an end of sin. How, you know? Jesus Christ offered himself as an antitypical sacrifice to God and thus he put an end for sin. Read Hebrews 9, 25 to 26. Monsoon Mother, can you read Hebrews 9, 25 to 26? Uh, okay, brother. Okay. Yeah, okay, it's written like this. Nor it that he should offer himself often as the high priest enter into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Ah, at the end of the world, only once he has appeared to finish it off forever. Thus he finished the transgression. There was an end of it. Now he says, to make an end of sin, you see, how did uh, Jesus make an end of sin? Read Hebrews 7.27. Uh, Muna sister, can you read Hebrews 7.27? Who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice First for his own sin, and then for the people's for this he did once, when he offered up himself. You see, there is no need for uh, Jesus to repeat the sacrifices uh, once for himself and then for his body members. That's what Aaron did. First he offered sacrifice for himself, next for his family, next for Israel. Jesus did this one once for all by dying on the cross. He made an end of sin. Then, to make reconciliation to iniquity. Because of the death of Jesus, what has happened? You see, we are reconciled to God. Read Hebrews 10, 14. Hebrews 10, chapter, verse 14. Uh, Amar brother, can you read Hebrews 10, 14? For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are uh, sanctified. You see? So he has perfected them who are sanctified once for all. So that is how he reconciled mankind to God. Next it says to bring in everlasting righteousness. Remember, you see, during the days of Israel, they used to get righteous before God. How? The sinners used to get righteous before God by offering sacrifices for their sin. Whenever they used to sin, they used to be guilty before God. So whenever they used to offer sacrifices to God, you see, what, what would happen? Uh, that reconciliation, uh, you see, that uh, righteousness uh, used to come to the people of Israel. They were again treated as sinless. Uh. You see, dear brethren, this was a temporary righteousness. Uh, it only lived, you see, till the sacrifice was there. 
But if the sacrifice is not there, again they would be termed as sinners. Again, you need to come and keep on sacrificing one by one, one by one, again, again, again to God. Because again they would sin, no? But Jesus brought everlasting righteousness. Book of Romans tells uh, the just shall live by faith. We are justified by Christ. By belief in Christ, we are justified once for all. Whatever sin we do, we have the robe of righteousness which covers us uh, and through which we have access to the throne of grace. Uh, daily we can cleanse ourselves. Uh, you see, no need to offer sacrifices again and again to God. Uh, you see, he brought everlasting righteousness. The righteousness that is going to stay forever and ever. You see, that is the righteousness of Jesus. Read Romans 8, 1. Romans 8, chapter, verse 1. Gopal brother, can you read Romans 8, 1? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Ah, there is no condemnation. No condemnation at all because they consider righteous. This is the everlasting righteousness which we got through Jesus. Then he sealed up the vision and prophecy. How did Jesus seal the vision? What is there in the prophecies? Uh, you know? What is there in the prophecies? Yeah? Let us see. Acts 3.21. Muslim brother, can you read Acts 3.21? Muslim brother, you're there. Acts 3.21, can you read? Ah, okay, brother. Okay, sorry, sorry for the time. Acts 3.21, okay. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of resituation of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets, since the world began. Ah, since the world began. All the prophets have spoken about only one thing. What is that one? Times of restitution of all things. A time is going to come when everything is going to be restored. This is the visions of all the Bible. This is what all the prophets in the Bible speak. By the death of Jesus, it is a guarantee that all these things about restoration, everything in God's kingdom is definitely going to happen. This is a guarantee that God's kingdom shall come on this earth. So Jesus even fulfilled this one. And the last thing, to anoint the most holy. Now who is the most holy? Everybody has sinners. There is nobody who is holy. You know, which is the precious thing in the sight of God. Huh? Who is the precious person? Who is the precious group in the sight of God? You see? In the gospel age, God is selecting that people. Now who are they? Let me see who is going to answer. One lakh forty-four. Very good, brother. One lakh forty-four thousand. Jesus anointed the church at the day of Pentecost. The one lakh forty-four thousand. So Jesus fulfilled all these things uh, in the seventy weeks. Uh, you see, when Jesus was anointed, it was twenty-nine A.D. and three and a half years. Uh, Jesus did his ministry. So he died on the cross 32 AD, 6 months. That means 33 AD. Jesus died on the cross. And you see, therefore we arrived 33 AD. That is the 33 AD when Jesus actually died on the cross. You see, and further, you see, three and a half years after death of Jesus, God had given special favor to the Jewish people only. You see, therefore you remember when the apostles started to preach, they never turned to the Gentiles. You see, until when? Until the 70 weeks of favor ended. Then only they turned to the Gentiles. Dear brother. And therefore, Peter was the first person to take the good news to the Gentiles. And the first Gentile convert was the Cornelio. That happened three and a half years after the death of Jesus. That is uh, 32 and a half years Plus three and a half years, you'll get 36 AD. 36 AD is the period 
when the Jewish fever completely ended. When the good news, you see, went on, you see, to the, uh, you see, first Gentile convert, Cornelio. Therefore, dear brethren, God granted the favor to the Gentiles also. You see, therefore, uh, what did Apostle Paul say when he was writing to Galatians? Uh, he said, no, there is neither male nor female. You see, neither Jew nor Greek. Uh, you see, everybody are same in the sight of God. So let us read Galatians 3, Galatians 3rd chapter. Uh, Galatians 3rd uh, chapter, verse uh, um, 28 and 29. Galatians 3, 28 and 29. Uh, Muna sister, can you read Galatians 3, 28 and 29? There, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and hears according to the promise. See, now there is no difference. No Jew, no Gentile, nothing. You see, but if we are in Christ, uh, we are the highest of the promise which God made to Abraham. God said, no, I will make oath upon myself. In thy seed, all the nations of this world will be blessed. That fulfillment will happen only through the church. Therefore, as per this prophecy, Jesus came and finished his work. Then what happened? What does the prophecy say? All the desolation, you see, will come upon Israel after you see, a special favor of 70 weeks were ended. God's anger came upon Israel. Jerusalem was totally destroyed. By 70 AD, the entire Jewish nation was scattered. That is what this prophecy says, dear brethren. Therefore, you see, this is the only prophecy which is in the entire Bible, which gives us when actually, you see, um, Jesus' first advent happened when actually, you see, Jesus died on the cross and when actually Jesus was baptized. Okay. Now, you can reverse calculate when Jesus was also born. You see, from, you see, 33 uh, AD, you go three and a half years back, you see, you know, we will get... We will come to a period where Jesus was actually born. And that period is too busy. I don't want to go into detail now. We'll go and take all these things in the coming days where we're going to discuss elaborately. Anyway, Jesus, through this calculation, if you see, Jesus was born in 2 BC. Okay. Now, this is the key to the time prophecy. The first key. See? Huh? Now, let us read one more time prophecy. You see? One more time prophecy that is given to us in about Gentile times. Where is it given? Let us read Luke 21, 24. Luke 21, 24. Uh, Mosam brother, can you read Luke 21, 24? Hey brother. And Luke 21, verse 24 is done like this. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be Throw down, down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. You see, Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles till when? Till the times of Gentiles be fulfilled. That means Gentiles were given a special favor time. A time of favor was given. And during that time, what will happen? Jerusalem shall be trodden down by them, not uh, the people of Israel. Underline it. Uh. See, make a difference. It says the land of Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the foot of Gentiles. That means uh, the land of Jerusalem shall be under the control of Gentiles. It seems till when? Till their time is over. Now what is the Gentile times? Uh, they have run. You see, when God gave blessings to Israel, he also gave, you see, curses to Israel. He said, if you obey my commandments, God shall bless you. But if you don't obey, he, God said, God shall punish you seven times. You see, let us read that verse. Uh, Leviticus 26, uh, verse 18. Uh, jo, uh, Gobal brother, can you read Leviticus 26, 18? 
And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Oh, I will punish you seven times more for your sins. This seven times more repeats four times in this uh, Leviticus 26 chapter, 21st verse, 24th verse, 28th verse. So why God mentions four times, it is like God stressing the matter that it, this will definitely happen. But what would happen after all this, uh, you see, punishment? Uh, God said there is going to be a wonderful blessing that is going to come to Israel. And the last and ultimate, uh, you see, punishment uh, would be that the land shall be desolate. And, la and the land shall enjoy our jubilees. Uh, read verse uh, 34 and 35 also, brother. Go for brother. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbath as long as it lieth desolate and ye be in your enemy's land. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbath. As long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest because it did not rest in your Sabbath when ye dwelt upon it. You see, it did not enjoy the Sabbath. Therefore, when you, God shall give you seven times punishment, the land shall rest, it seems. Okay? Now, you see, seven times means, uh, this is not little times. We already studied uh, about the Antichrist period. Time, times, half a times. You see, Antichrist we have studied now. Huh? Huh? Okay, let us read. Daniel 7.25. Daniel 7.25. Uh, Romy sister, can you read Daniel 7.25? Thirty-five, brother. Yeah. Um. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saint of the Most High and think of change time and laws and they shall be given unto his hand until the time and times and the dividing of times. Very good, sir. See, time, times and dividing of times. These times we already studied in book of Daniel, it is one year actually. So, times Time and half a time, three and a half years. So we studied about Antichrist, uh, this uh, symbolic uh, times. Uh, you see, anyway, similarly in Leviticus, when it mentions seven times, it means uh, seven years. Uh, not literal seven years, but the symbolic seven years. Uh, you see, you remember these periods? Uh, you see, Daniel, uh, what period mentions? It is also mentioned in Revelation, you see, 12 chapter, 6 verse, 1260 days. Same in years, it is mentioned in Daniel 12, 14. Same in months, it is mentioned in Daniel, sorry, Revelation 13, 5, 42 months. So everything is actually mentioning about the same period. 1260 days is equal to 42 months. You see, 42 months is actually equal to three and a half, you see, years. So anyway, we are just now put the formula where for a prophet, one day is equal to one year. So seven times means how many years? Seven years. So, in seven years, how many days are there? If you calculate, it has 2,520 days. 360 days per year into seven years. Biblical year has 360 days in a year. So, seven years into 360 days, it comes to 2,520 days. So, this 2,520 days for a prophet, one year if you apply, it actually means 2,520 years. So, Jesus was actually telling, you see, that the people of Israel, you see, shall be trodden. That means the land of Israel shall be trodden under the Gentiles for a period of 2,000, you see, 520 years. So, when did it begin? You see, yeah, God said, the Gentiles nations, Gentile times. So, which is the Gentile kingdom? that actually started to rule upon Israel. If you see, 
we have studied this one in Daniel second chapter. The first nation is Babylon. You see, Babylon was the one who began to rule the Gentile power, the universal emperor. We studied about this one in Daniel second chapter, seven chapter. Therefore, I am not going in detail. You see, he is the head of gold. He is the lion. You see, so he began to rule. So, from 606 BC, if you calculate 2520 years, it gives us a date. Now, now you calculate and tell me, 2520 minus 606, how much you will get? Somebody, please calculate and tell me, 2520 minus 606 BC. This is BC, hence we need to minus. If it was AD, we could have added it. Now, you please tell me, 2520 minus 606 BC is how much? 1914. Very good. 19? How much? 19? 14. Very good, sir. 1914. So, what happened in 1914? That is a fulfillment of the prophecy, the end of Gentile times. You know what happened in 1914? First World War happened. Imagine in the history of the entire world, there is no World War mentioned at all. You see, but suddenly in 1914, why is it mentioned? Because that was the fulfillment of God's prophecy. Remember the subject of Daniel 2nd chapter, where this multi-metallic, you see, structure, uh, the image, you see, the statue that was hit by a stone. You see, the stone represents the second coming of Jesus. And the stone written in 1874, but hit this uh, Gentile, you see, powers at his feet when 1914. You see, what happens to the structure if it is hit at the foot? The entire head, the body will all fall down. That is what happened. 1914, the first world war happened when the stone came and hit. Since then, all the world powers are being made weak and Jesus is pounding them, pounding them, pounding them, making them weak. Dear brethren, you see, all the world powers are made weak. First world war, you know what happened since then? What did the prophecy say? Jerusalem shall be trodden down under the foot of the Gentiles till the Gentile times are over. That means once this Gentile times is over, Jerusalem should no more be trodden down. That, that means Jerusalem land should be restored to the Jewish people. Was it restored? Yes, it was restored. It began from 1914. Balfour Declaration happened. And the land slowly began to be given to the Jewish people. And ultimately, the Jewish people received their freedom on May 14, 1948. Therefore, they were these two time prophecies are very important time prophecies where it relates us how the times has to be calculated in the Bible. For a prophet, one day means one year. It's not literally, you see, it's not literally one day at all. It is a year prophecy. So if you apply that one day, brethren, the whole things which are happening in the world is completely written in the Bible. Daniel's second chapter. 7th chapter, written nearly 4,000 years before then we lived. It is really explaining about today's you see, facts. Today's things which are happening before us, right, dear brethren. So these are wonderful time prophecies. Okay. Uh, anybody has got any doubts, any questions? You can ask. Anybody? Any questions? Joel, brother, any doubts, any questions? Uh, no question, brother. Okay. Mausam, brother, any questions, any doubts? No, 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 any questions, brother. Okay. Muna, sister? No question, brother. Okay. Romi, sister? Amar, brother? Sister, any questions? Brother, any question? No question, sir. 